Hello and welcome to week 17 of a 52-week series on what every web administrator needs to know to be successful in this space. My name is Scott Forsyth and today I want to talk to you about IIS's distributed and delegated configuration system. IIS 7 has a new configuration system which is drastically different than that of IIS 6, which I'll show you shortly. It's a welcome upgrade in many ways, but it comes with a number of gotchas, which I wanted to touch base for us to consider. In fact, if there's anything in IIS 7 that hangs up the most people, I would probably say it's a distributed configuration system here. So today is going to have more theory than usual, but don't worry, I'll also show some configurations, some settings, some paths, and that will, I think, lay some good foundation to understand here in IIS. So let's go back in time to understand IS6 better. And in IS6, we really had two paths. We had the IS path and kind of the .NET path. And everything related to IS lives in this one file, metabase.xml. You have site configuration, your app pools, MIME types, compression, various settings like default documents, everything like that lived in one and only one file. And you also had the .NET path, and really .NET was not a first-class citizen. So .NET is on the parallel with classic ASP, PHP, CGI apps, and so there's nothing really special about .NET. And we see this configuration system, and I'll show you this shortly, that existed in .NET and still does. So now, when it came time to do the IS7 planning, the IS team actually had to do some discussion back and forth and says, what are we going to do? Are we going to go with making the metabase.xml, what we're doing right now, are we going to improve on that? Or should we adopt the .NET conventions and the way the .NET team had done it? And so actually the decision was made to go down the .NET path. As a result, we end up with this. Here's the configuration system for IS 7.0 and, and later. And so you see there's two paths, and they're now merged into one. So .NET now becomes a first-class citizen, and what happens here is IS, we start with this redirection.config file, which basically points to where these two next files live, and application host.config and administration.config host most of the settings related to IS, but a lot of settings now related to not just the .NET aspect, but also the IS configuration part of it can live in these files here, web.config and also the subfolders app.config or app web.config files. And then .NET itself is the same as it always was. You have your machine.config and your root web.config and of course they also leverage the web.config files. So what this means is a lot of the IS settings that used to only be managed by the, the actual server's administrator are now managed by the development team as well and they can live within these files. And that makes it a distributed configuration system because this diagram only shows one site. But of course, imagine if you had 100 sites on a server, then this particular part of it is multiplied by 100 of them here, a whole bunch of different sites, and is distributed all over the place. And by delegated, we now see that the actual developers have control to make changes directly. So to understand this better, let's actually go and look at these files ourselves. So if we go here into the path, actually I just added some shortcuts here to make it a bit easier, but it's C, it's C Windows System 32 INET Serve Config, and we start with the redirection.config. This file here, it's real simple, because all it's really meant to do is point to the other files. And if you're using shared config on a web farm, you may point this elsewhere rather than this default location, in which case this configuration redirection will be enabled with a path that's set. So that's your redirection.config. And in this case, because shared configuration isn't enabled, the two other files are right here. Administration.config is used generally for the IS manager related settings. For example, which icons are being used, which are enabled, and you also have the IS manager users and some settings, for example, web deploy and the settings can actually be, not this particular one, but the settings also live here at the bottom as well. So that's your administration.config. Your application host config kind of replaces the metabase.xml, or at least this is the guts of IIS here in the application host config. This is where we see the app pools, we see the websites, and tons of settings, all the default settings, everything else lives in this file here. In fact, let me just quickly skim it so we see the various different sections. I can jump here to app pools and you can see the various app pools jump to sites 
you can see the sites. And actually, you can edit it like I'm doing here in Notepad if you want. Just be real careful. If I do something that breaks valid XML, like if I were to save this right here, that's going to uh, break with an ugly error. The entire IIS will go down if I were to make that mistake. And then once it goes through these three files, again, looking at this diagram back here, you see it goes to re redirection, the other two files, and then we have the sites config files. So if we go here to Contoso root, and right now I don't have the web.config has been added, but if this was used, that gets loaded before the website gets loaded. And then on the .NET side, we see here in C Windows Microsoft.NET, in this case, I'm on a 64-bit server, so I have Framework 64, and then the 32-bit version is here as well. And what's interesting, again, I only show two in this diagram, but there's really going to be, in, in my case, on this machine, four of these files, four sets of the files. And so let's go into Framework 64, let's say version 2, and config, and now you can see the machine.config and the web.config, these two files here. But don't forget, we also have a version for the 4.0, and we have the version for 64 and non-64. And also note that you have the 3 and 3.5. If, if you're familiar with .NET, you know these two are not core framework versions. They're add-ons and extensions to 2.0. So these three are really a set. And then 4.0 is a new framework version again. And I have the V1.0 and the V1.1 folders, but those are skeleton folders. They're not used in this case, but that could potentially be installed for you as well. Okay, so the next thing we want to look at is the feature delegation, is what settings are allowed to be applied here in the config files versus what has to be set up here at the global level. And so if we go here to contosa.com, actually let's go to the root, and we're going to go to feature delegation, that as a web administrator you have authority to change this. And every setting, or really config section, is has a decision on whether it's read-write, if it has read-write it can be delegated, and if it's read-only, for example the ISAPI fe features are read-only, or whether anonymous authentication is enabled or not. That is read-only by default. This can all be changed, unless you have full control. You have a lot of chain settings that can be changed here. But that determines whether it can be written in web.config or not. Now another thing that's important to note is the same settings that can be written to web.config are also the settings that are allowed if someone connects to the server remotely. So if you do turn on remote management and someone connects to a site, anything here that's read-write is what they're able to use. It shares the exact same permissions whether it's the web.config file or it's connecting remotely through the IIS manager. So let's take a look at some of the advantages of the new distributed configuration system. So one is the developers now have full control of the IIS settings, or at least many of the settings, the ones that they have control over. Uh, also, basically that management has been delegated out to them. Also, IIS configuration can be saved in the source control. So you can save it way back in the source control, and when you deploy to a new server or even a new environment, the same settings will work in the new environment as well. Um, also, it's easier to maintain when migrating because those settings will carry over with the site config that you have right from your source control. And also, anyone that creates websites and any kind of various different programs like that, they can be pre-tested and pre-configured to work exactly as needed there. And so that works great for those because they can just take the entire package, zip it up, and then someone can x-deploy it out to a brand new environment and the settings will work for them. Now, this is theory and it works for a large part but some settings won't work as well as we hoped because they're not delegated and so you run into clashes or different environments will grant permission to manage it and others will deny permission. So let me show you now how IS Manager works with the different settings. So if we go here to let's say contosa.com and go to compression, now notice it shows here in the status bar, this is really important, here in the status bar we see that this setting, if we make the change, will be applied to the contosa.com's web.config, and actually let's do it. So we're going to apply this, and I'm going to right-click Explore. Notice the web.config file has been created, and we see within the system.webserver section, this is for IIS now, IIS related settings, we see the URL compression for dynamic has been disabled. Now if we go to a setting, so I can let's enable both of those again, and let's go to a setting like SSL settings that is not delegated by default. And so I'm going to say require SSL. And notice this one says it's going to be saved to application host config wrapped in a location tag for contosa.com. So let me show you what this means. So I'm going to apply this. 
and let's go to our IS config, application host config. And here at the bottom, we have this concept of a location tag. This is common in the .NET world, now used in IS since 7.0. And we see the location with a path for the site name. And now, same structure, system.webserver, security, and we see the SSL flag has been set, which basically says let's require that SSL. So the settings you can now see, let's go back to this diagram, can live either here in application host config or delegated way out to the website's config or even in a subfolder just as well. So they could re really live in multiple places. And let's actually look at our gotchas here with the distributed configuration. There's a few things to keep in mind. One is it's very easy to override these settings. Let's say I make a change here to compression like I did and if we go here to the Contosa's root and notice here, let's say now I made this change for my IS manager. Now a developer makes a change and pushes out the latest code. That takes his web.config and possibly it's done with transforms and everything else. Regardless, whatever he has that's scheduled to push out to the server is going to override whatever I have in this web.config. It's going to blow it away. And now I've lost whatever my settings were. That's a common mistake that was not a problem in IS 6 and before and is a new problem in IS 7. So it's not really a disadvantage, it's something that you need to consider. So don't forget, any change you make, make sure you work all the way back to your source control. Uh, app domain recycle, and I talked about this on week 12, talking about app domains. Anytime you touch a web.config, you're going to cause that app domain recycle, which is going to have a performance hit, and you're losing any in-process session state or caching of any type there. And so the same thing happens here. Because I made that change to compression, that's going to cause that app domain recycle. That's another big gotcha. It was not a problem in IS 6, and that is kind of a concern. It's kind of a, it seems like a step back, but it's just a consequence of the progress that we make in other areas, unfortunately, touches that web.config, which causes that app domain recycle. And also, the configuration is all over the place. So previously, everything related to IS lived in this one place, and now we see it could be an application host config, it can be in a website, it can be a, another website, subfolder, and if you have multiple sites, it's all over the place. So the development team now has to keep track of all these settings. Now you may find that's a huge advantage. Really, as the lines are blurred between IS and ASP.NET, maybe that's a natural evolution step anyways. But it's something to keep in mind, is that configuration can really live in different places than you expect. And also, the configuration is not replicated with shared config only. It's actually shared config plus all the content folders. So if you're replicating your config files back and forth, don't forget that the various different settings like that could live in a distributed location all over the place. So there we have IS7's configuration system. I hope you found that useful. A lot of theory there today. And I hope to see you again next week. Thanks for tuning in.